very path breaking it's a very comprehensive budget and we are particularly delighted because the, the finance minister has acknowledged the role of niti but more important than that is the the road map that she sets in terms of uh, uh, laying down a vision for the 5 trillion dollar economy and that is that uh, to be achieving that you needed we needed credit flow to take off so she's provided 70000 crores for the banks she's focused on in a very very big way on nbfcs and hfcs she said that the government will uh, be a stop back for up to 10% of the as pooled of assets which the banks will take over from nbfcs uh, she's brought in a regulatory regime for nbfc and hfcs but more important than that uh, she's focused on strategic disinvestment she's focused on uh, asset monetization she's talked about and this this actually should bring in a lot of private sector play in india mm -hmm. which is very important they should bring in the animal spirit mm -hmm. of the private sector mm -hmm. but she's also provided 100 lakh crores over a period of 5 years to drive infrastructure mm -hmm. and when this uh, we are able to create roads, we are able to create ports, uh, we are able to create uh, airports. Mm -hmm. uh, you will see a huge multiplier effect in the economy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other key thing of the budget is that it pushes for a very unique ecosystem for the startups. So she's done a lot for our startups. Mm -hmm. And this, to my mind, is a remarkable feature of the budget. Mm -hmm. And she takes on the issue of angel tax. She provides exemption of angel tax on AIF2 funds so that they can fund startups. Uh, she pushes for digitization in a very big way uh, by ensuring that merchants don't have to pay that extra amount and she pushes for uh, electric vehicles mm -hmm. and uh, I, I think uh, while we talk about saving investment and exports but mm -hmm. how do you do it without manufacturing so she's talking about large-scale manufacturing of gigafactories PVs uh, mobiles etc and says that she will provide 35 AD so to my mind it's a very comprehensive very exhaustive and a very path-breaking budget uh, so regarding the foreign investment foreign investment also uh, somewhere tax taxation is also needed. So, like, how do you see this foreign investment tax together like coming in regarding this present situation where GDP is uh, like do you think we, uh, like also GDP comes no she so she is talking about opening up FDI in mm -hmm. several areas she talks about opening it up in terms of uh, airports uh, and several key areas, yeah, FDI opening up and sectoral limits in some, some other areas. She talks about, uh, she's opened up the single brand route, which I think will open up the route for easing up on single brand, which will open up the route for a lot of foreign mobile companies uh, to manufacture here. So a lot of them, Apple, uh, Xiaomi, uh, Oppo, uh, they don't have to get into this business of 30% sourcing, etc. They can do manufacturing here. This will give a, again a massive thrust to manufacturing. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, if you look at in totality, uh, FDI is important because she opens up another window of saying that you can we do external borrowings uh, mm -hmm. and the external borrowings mm -hmm. uh, even if you're using even if you're not country is not doing external borrowings but you're using a proxy like exim bank to do external borrowing uh, you'll be able to do it at, uh, on the mm -hmm. basis of sovereign ratings and therefore you can get a lot of cheap external money at low rates and use it for creation of infrastructure so what is the take on fiscal uh, policy that's coming so like, like uh, also uh, actually doing good in fiscal policy or is it still lagging behind so? no fiscal policy we she's maintained the balance that mm -hmm. she's brought it from 3.4 to 3.3 percent mm -hmm. which is a very remarkable thing so she's a great believer she's a great believer in fiscal discipline so she's really focused on being fiscally prudent fiscally responsible and fiscally uh, she ensures that it's six to three point three and yet is able to do a lot of things by taxing on petrol and other things mm -hmm. So uh, Niti Aayog will focus on every aspect of the budget in terms of structural reforms in agriculture where we've, uh, Honorable Prime Minister has uh, formed this committee of chief ministers which is very critical. We'll focus on MSME, we'll focus on electric vehicles, we'll focus on artificial intelligence. All these are areas of growth for us. Sir, in, in all these, uh, will MSME play the major role here? MSME will play a very critical, very major role because they are a very big job creator. Mm -hmm. India can't grow without jobs and jobs are critical and MSME will provide them. Uh, sir, just one question. Uh, 
सर हाउ नीति आयोग वेलकम कर रहे हैं ये पूरे बजट हम लोग बहुत खुश हैं क्योंकि माननीय निर्मल सीता रमन जी का बहुत ही अच्छा बजट बहुत ही कॉम्प्रेंसिव और बहुत ही दूरदर्शी बजट था और पाथ ब्रेकिंग बजट है और इसमें सत्तर हज़ार करोड़ उन्होंने बैंक के रिकैपिटलाइजेशन के लिए प्रोवाइड किया उन्होंने एन बी की बहुत बात की और उन्होंने इसके अलावा स्ट्रेटजिक डिसइन्वेस्टमेंट और इस पे फोकस किया एसेट मोनेटाइजेशन पे जिससे प्राइवेट सेक्टर आ सके स्टार्टअप्स और हमारे डिजिटल पेमेंट को बढ़ावा दिया और उसके साथ साथ इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स को भी आगे ले गए सर लास्ट क्वेश्चन सर ऑल ओवर नीति आयोग के सबसे ज़्यादा मेजर इम्पोर्टेंस किसको मिलने वाला मेरे विचार से नीति आयोग की तरफ से तो हम सबसे ज़्यादा मेहनत एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर में स्ट्रक्चरल रिफॉर्म्स को करेंगे क्योंकि उससे सबसे ज़्यादा लोगों को फायदा होगा